Welcome to this MaxQDA tutorial. Today we will take a look at the stats module for statistical analyses in MaxQDA. The stats module is included in MaxQDA Analytics Pro, and if you have an Analytics Pro license, you will find the stats module under stats in the ribbon menu. In general, we can start stats with data from SPSS or Excel tables, or work with the data in our project. For now, we use the data from our project and therefore click on this button here. Then the stats window opens with a new menu and three tabs. Here we see the data viewer. Each case or document from our project is a row here. The assigned variables in turn are shown in the columns. The table can now be sorted by columns or filtered by values. We can also edit variable values here. Variables can also be created or edited via the variable list. The results of our analyses can then be collected in the output viewer. Let's start by taking a look at how to display certain frequencies in stats. To do this, we simply click on Descriptive Statistics and Frequencies. Then a window opens in which all the variables and codes for which we can display frequencies are listed on the left-hand side. If I now click the variables Age and Education, the result tables and frequencies for both variables are displayed. At the top, I can switch between the result tables for both variables. We can still edit these tables after they have been created, so that we can, for example, delete irrelevant rows or merge two rows. The frequencies are then calculated again. I can also save the documents and cases that a row is comprised of as a document set using this button, so that I can examine them more closely in MaxQDA later on. I can also visualize the results from the tables in charts by clicking on this button here. I can then modify the chart, for example, change the coloring. The chart or the table can then be sent to the output viewer by clicking on this button here. With stats, we can also calculate new variables based on our variables and codes. This can be done by clicking Transform and Compute New Variable. Here, I can name my variable, and if I am interested, for example, in whether my interviewees are more likely to make positive or negative statements, I can enter the corresponding calculation here to calculate the difference between the codes positive and negative. Then a new variable is created, whose value in this case shows me whether positive or whether negative statements predominate in each case and how strongly they predominate. The higher the value in this case, the more positive statements predominate. If we have had a negative value here, then the negative statements would predominate. If I want to find out whether certain codes and variables occur in certain cases, then I can also have the display of the codes binarized here. A1 stands for the presence of the code in the respective case, and A0 for the fact that the code was not assigned. I can also work with main codes and then sum up the frequencies of the subcodes. For example, I can see here that a total of four people talk about other people four times, while six people talk about other people eleven times. Let's assume that a table or chart displaying frequencies is too detailed for us, like this overview of the age of interviewees. Then we can also recode the original variable. To do this, we simply click Transform and select Recode with New Variable. Here we can first select the variable we want to recode and give the variable a new name. Here we can enter our new values and define how they should relate to each other. So to define my age groups, I always select smaller intervals. I can then assign value labels via the variable list.
I can then display the frequencies for this new variable. By clicking Descriptive Statistics, I can also display the univariate key figures for a whole series of variables in a clear table. For example, I can now look at the distribution of certain codes sorted by groups. If I insert the variable people codings here, which shows how often the interviewees talked about other people, and then divide this up according to the variable relationship status, I get this overview. Here we can see that there are 30 cases. 13 of these people have a partner and 17 are single. I also see the mean value of how often the interviewees talk about other people. In addition, I can also have box plots displayed here, whose design I can change here. Instead, we can also compare groups, for example, with the help of cross tabs. Again, we can binarize the display here. We can now also use the results from this table to filter our cases in the data editor. More complex calculations like the t-test or the man whitney u test are also possible. First, I'd select my people codings variable and the relationship status variable. The two groups are automatically recognized by stats. In order to understand how the differences are to be evaluated, values such as Cohen's D or Hedges G star are displayed in this table. I can also switch back to a visualization here. If we now want to compare more than two groups, we can also perform an analysis of variance. Here we get descriptive information and values that help us evaluate differences. We can also look at correlations with stats and calculate Pearson's R or Spearman's Rho. To do this, I first select codes or variables that are of interest to me. In this table, we can now display the correlation by coloring it. Green fields indicate particularly high correlations. We can also highlight the individual cells according to p-values. Another special feature is that we can also display the correlation between two codes or two variables in a scatter plot. By hovering over the dots, I can see which cases are hidden behind the dots. These groups can then be saved in MaxQDAS document sets in order to continue working with them. I can also use the entries directly in stats as filters. Let's assume we now have found some variables that we want to use to construct a scale. We can do a reliability analysis by selecting the items here. For the current selection, Kronbach's alpha is shown here. If I click here, the entry marked in red shows the item with the lowest correlation. Here we can see what Kronbach's alpha would look like if the item would be removed. I can then use this button to remove the item from the scale. And if we now click here, we can create a new scale. Finally, let's take a quick look at the output viewer. To use one of these outputs in another program, I can copy it here and then paste it into Word, for example, to include it in my writing. 